Hello, welcome to the Blanford Seek and See Passport Program. This program is created with help from a grant from the MBLC and the IMLS. And today we're going to be doing the first part of this program, which is an introduction to letterboxing. What is letterboxing? Letterboxing is a really fun hobby that actually began in 1854 in Victorian England, when a man named James Perrault decided that it would be really fun to go to the wildest, most inaccessible place in all of England, which was Dartmoor, this blustery seaside area, and then leave a little message in a bottle in a rock area and waited for somebody else to come along and find that and see the little note inside, which said to please put their note in it, and that is the beginnings of letterboxing. Now we have letterboxes all around the world and you can actually find them by going online and typing in a location into letterboxing.org and it will give you all of the clues that you need to find letterboxes in your own community. There is already one in Blanford and as of next week, there'll probably be a lot more. So make sure that you check out the information that's going to be going along with this video to find the letterboxes hidden around town. So now we're going to show you how you can actually make your own letterbox. So this kit is the Blanford Backpack Kit. And in here, we have all of the things that you're going to need to create your own letterboxing kit. Let's find out what's in the bag. We've got two little passport books and some blocks of wood, some pieces of foam, and a stamp pad. So you can see that this is not quite the way that James Perrault started letterboxing with homemade little cards in a kit. This way uses stamps. And the basic letterboxing letterbox kit that you'll find looks a little bit like this, or it could even look like a book. It could look like a rock. People like to decorate their letterboxes so they blend into the environment, making them a little bit trickier to find and also a little bit more secure because if somebody just saw a box like this, they might just pick it up and throw it away. So letterboxes can look like anything. The ones that we're hiding are going to look like this outside of the library. And then the ones that are in the library might not look like this. We might be sneaky in the library, but there'll be plenty of clues to help you along. So inside the letterboxing kit, You'll see that we have a nice little letter on the front here telling people what letterboxing is in case they accidentally find this. And then we've got a stamp and a little booklet. And I also put in the library flyer so that people will know what the library is all about. So you can also put in something in your letterbox that has information about you in it as well. And then the book is in a plastic baggie, just in case any rain manages to get into our really well secured letterbox. So the way that this works is you would find the clue for the letterbox, and then hunt down that letterbox. Clues can be something like 10 paces past the big tree under the bench to the west. So they can be a little cryptic, but very descriptive like that, or they could be more of like a, like a puzzle that you have to work out. So the clues can be many different kinds of clues. And once you find the letterbox, you're going to take out the stamp that is in the letterbox, and you're going to stamp your book. That's why there are two books in here. One book you carry with you, and you use the stamp from the letterbox to stamp your book, just like a passport, right? To show that you've been there. And then the other one that you're going to create for your personal stamp, you would then stamp into the letterbox book. So it's the book inside the letterbox that you're going to place your stamp in. So they're gonna know that you were there. And today I'm going to give you a short demonstration on you put everything back. I'm going to give you a short demonstration on how to make your own stamp for letterboxing. Some people purchase stamps. So here's one that's been purchased, right? It's a personal stamp that's been purchased and already made for me, but I think it's more fun and personal to make your own stamp. So the first thing that we're going to need to do is gather our supplies. We'll need a pen, preferably one that's not a very nice pen, a pair of scissors, and then you're going to need the block and the piece of foam from the kit. There we go. And now we're going to design our stamp. So you're going to want to think about what you might want your stamp to do and what you might want it to say on it. Um, because this is a library and because I really like books, I'm going to just do a little book on the stamp. So the easiest way to do it first is to plan what you're going to draw on the size of it by putting it on here on the back. So we're gonna do an open book and it doesn't have to be anything very specific. Right, And remember, it's going to print out backwards. 
So anything that you put on the stamp that you write, you're going to have to write backwards. Otherwise, when it gets stamped out, it's not going to have it in the right direction. And some pages on the book. There we go. So now we have a basic idea of the shape of our stamp and the size. So now we're going to flip it over onto the foam size now that I've kind of got the idea of how it's going to fit on there. And the idea is that you're going to push down hard with the pen because you're not trying to get the ink on. You're trying to get the dent into the foam. And that dent is what's going to actually stamp out your drawing. So now we're going to push hard and I'm going to make that little V shape. And of course, yours will be whatever design you like. And then we're going to do the same shape down at the bottom for the bottom of the book. And again, this doesn't have to be perfect because it's not supposed to look like it was made by a machine. This is a person-made stamp, which makes it all the more special. All right, there we go. And now we're gonna do this on the side. So now we've got our book cover, right? So we're gonna do some lines for the pages. There we go. Very rough idea of pages and it's an open book. And I'm gonna do this little. And I am gonna have this book, so this would be the front of the cover. I'm going to have, actually, when I stamp it, that'll be the back of the cover. Ooh, good to remember. So because this is gonna be the back of the cover when I stamp it, I'm gonna put here a heart on the book because I heart books. And I'm gonna color that heart in so that way it's really defined on the stamp. So anything that you color in is going to have a larger pressed down area. There we go. And you're gonna to wanna to go over this a little bit and you can always come back into your stamp with the pen after you've impressed it into the ink because that way you'll be able to see what did and didn't work. So now that we've got the basic outline, we're going to cut out the shape and this is where it's gonna get a little cleaner as well because you can make a, a straighter line with your scissors edge. And then I'm gonna do a little indent here because the pages are always smaller than the cover. There we go. So now let's see, if you feel it, you'll be able to tell which areas you've successfully pushed down enough. You'll feel the dents. And this line of the binding here isn't quite down far enough. There we go. So now that you've made your impression onto the foam, we're gonna take this and we're going to peel off that sticky backing and put it on any side of the stamp. And the fun thing here is that each stamp, each block that you have could have multiple stamps on it. You just need to leave enough room for your fingers to grasp. So as long as you have a good area that you can grasp on the sides, then you can also put more stamps on the other sides. So each member of your family could have their very own stamp on the same block, which is a pretty fun idea. And now each letter boxer is responsible for carrying with them their own ink pad, because if the ink pad is in the box, then it will be exposed to the elements and it probably wouldn't last for very long. So inside your bag, you'll find that you have your very own ink pad. And this you can keep all of the things in the kit you can keep unless it's a laminated piece of paper that tells you to bring it back. So you're gonna just open up your ink pad and now we're gonna test it out. So let's see. Making sure to really ink it up. Now it's got the color on and the book that you're going to keep, right? And put your stamps inside, the one that you're gonna collect the stamps from the other letter boxes in you're going to put your stamp right on the cover of it. Let's see how this works. And there's the stamp. Right? So it looks like the thing that I just made in there, the book. Now, maybe I want that heart to be a little bit more hearty on this side. There we go. And I actually, I recommend testing this out on a scrap piece of paper before you put it on your book. Let me just grab a piece of scrap paper here. Okay, so now we're gonna test this out to make sure it looks just the way we want it, nice and inked up. Ta-da! And there's your book stamp. 
So now you know how you're gonna make your stamp and you've got the book that you're going to use to collect the stamps from the letter box in. And you've also got a blank book and a blank stamp box, uh, block another one, so that you can make a stamp and a letter box book to go inside your very own letter box. I did not include in the kit the letter box itself because this is something that you should design for where you're going to put it. So it does not need to look like this one. It can look like anything that you'd like and it can have anything in it that you think would make a fun thing to find. Letterboxing is similar to geocaching, but unlike geocaching, letterboxing doesn't rely on having a stash of prizes in the box and it's not about collecting a thing. It's all about the experience. And that's really why I chose to do this for our first Seek and See Blanford Passport program because I was really excited about the idea of people going outside into Blanford now that spring is finally coming and exploring our community. We have so many beautiful natural wonders. So that actually brings me to the very last part about letterboxing, which is where you would hide your letterbox. Um, you would hide your letterbox in an area that is not somewhere that people could get hurt going to, right? So we're not gonna put it under a raging waterfall or balancing on the edge of a cliff. We don't want this to be something that somebody is going to get injured going to and finding. The other important thing about this is that you're going to wanna to make sure that you're not trespassing, right? So you're not gonna hide a letterbox on somebody else's property um, because your neighbor does not want everybody trekking to their doorstep to find their letterbox. So make sure that it's somewhere that is public property, easily accessible, uh, and make sure that you don't use anything that could cause harm to somebody to make your actual box. So nothing that's a glass, nothing that's got sharp pointies on it, right? So that's just common sense. And make sure you're not putting it in a national, like historical site. So we're not gonna start putting letter boxes in the Grand Canyon or um, you know, on the doorstep of the historical society or anywhere that is considered a protected um, treasured area. So this should be somewhere that you're calling attention to that is a unique area, but not something that's a protected set aside historical landmark. All right, so if you have any questions, there's going to be a lot of information in the letterboxing kit, and you can also call the library or send an email to the library, and we'll be able to clarify that for you. But I hope that this gives you a good overview of why letterboxing is fun and how you can get started on this too. Happy hunting!